Good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this IT session. Um, we're just going to give one or two minutes for people to to log in still. It might be one or two guys still uh, logging in, so just give them about two two minutes. Good afternoon, welcome to the IT Information Technology. We're going to have a look at um, PET and we are basically going to look at phase one today. Um, I know a lot of you haven't started with it, that yet and maybe we'll be starting a bit later and I think it's a very good way to start your session. Just before we start, I'm Jan Albertain. Um, Info, uh, education spe specialist for the subject information technology. Um, before we get, begin this webinar, there's just a few basics that you want to go through. If you're struggling to hear me, make sure that your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. You will automatically be muted at the joining of the session. Should you have any questions, please ask your questions in the question box on the right hand side of your screen. Um, if uh, to raise your hand, just click on the icon on the dashboard below on your right. I think just to make sure that everybody's in with us, will you just uh, just put up your hands, please, so that I can just see where you are. Good, I see quite a few hands there. Great, that's wonderful. I just repeat, if there's any questions further, please let me know by typing it in your question box and we can basically have a look at that at the end of the session. And I feel that it's very good for, even if you feel that you, if you think your question is irrelevant about the pet, that you still raise the, your question. Right, so um, let's just go on with this uh, admin before we go on. Uh, remember to send us your questions, as I said already. You are encouraged to ask questions and to leave comments. However, irrelevant and inappropriate comments will result in that you might be removed from the session. If you do, if you didn't get uh, if we didn't get your question, please email it to academics at uh, impact.co.za as it is shown at the screen. Questions in the question box will be answered and made available afterwards. And if you didn't receive a question on your answers, please send us a mail at info at You can also have a look at our YouTube channel and have a look at this video afterwards. We are now going to start with our session. Okay, for the pet this year, you are, have, you are going to have to write a game, and create a game. Now, I must emphasize that you try to make your game as simple as possible, though it needs still to be a game that you use what you've learned this year. So please don't make it too complex because that will make that you spend a lot of time with this game and that will influence your other subjects. So please make it simple, but try to make a game that is interesting and the game that you would want to show other people and other people would want to play. Okay, so why a pet? A pet is a performance assessment task and it basically counts a quarter of your end of your year mark. It's seen as a question paper and it carries just as much weight as your theory and practical exam at the end of the year is going to be. It also is a forerunner for what you are going to do for next year. 
And it's very, very important that you really start doing it right from the beginning. So it's a good exercise for you. It is one of those things that um, you are going to learn a lot from. I know all the students I've taught over the years have said that by doing that path, they've learned very, um, really learned a lot. Okay, so let's just go on to the next. So the path basically has three phases. The first phase is your research and planning. The second is design, and the third phase is your program. Okay, so in phase one, we're not really looking at the program yet. We are doing education and research on your program. So we are going to look in real life what is out there, and according to that, we are going to see if we can write a program that is similar to that or basically has, um, has the same characteristics of programs out there. Okay, so your program in phase, your, your phase one would basically consist of two parts. Part one is research. And for research, you need to go and have a look at things outside already. So a noughts and crosses program, maybe a program on monopoly, something that's really, really out there. So this is, as I said, it's not, the first part is not a phase about your project. It's about what is out there already um, in real life, games that are available. Okay. You need to research on other programs, as I said already, that is similar to the program that you are going to write. Okay, so if you are writing a program that is a board game, it might be a good thing that you go and have a look at Monopoly or Risk or Cluedo and see is there are there games out there that handle that type of, of, of program. Okay. You need to write a paragraph that what you research about. And I'm just going to have a look now at what is what needs to be in that research project. What is in that paragraph? Now, if I say a paragraph, I mean that you need to really interrogate your research. You need to have a look and you need to show us that you did your research. So if you want to really have a look, you need to have a look firstly, what does the user need to do in your program? So if you are going to look in Monopoly, what is the user doing there? Okay, the user needs to log on. He needs to move. Um, he needs to throw a dust. Uh, if, you're, if you have something like risk, what happens in risk? What does the user need to do there? Okay. So what input does the user need to have? So what, what does he need to enter? What does the program process? So if you are writing Monopoly, you must basically have something where you're throwing a dice. When you're throwing a dice, the thing has to move. If, if your, if your um, component moved, it might end up in a specific street. When it gets there, what will happen there? Okay, so that's all the things that you need to have a look in that program. What does that program give us the output? Remember, I say again, this is not your program. This is a program that you are researching. Okay, you need to compare at least three games with one another. You need to summarize the research in such a way that it is clear to the direction of your program. So you need to summarize it and you need to see what's happening in those programs. Okay, so let's just have a look further. You need to explain how the program, the research will give direction to your program, as I said already. Okay, so now we get to your program. Now your program needs to have a scenario. What is your program about? So this is the second part of phase one. So phase one, first part was your research, looking at the, at the different things that are there, already out there. And the second part, as I say, is your program. So what's your, what does a program do? So let's have a look at you, what you need to do here. You need to have a short description of about 150 words what your program is going to do. 
Let's give me, let me give you an example. If you know how Norts and Crosses looks, it's basically a, a, a screen, and on screen you have nine blocks. Those nine blocks, other person can, one user is going to put a click, and he's going to have a, a naught, the other is going to put a cross. What is the object, ob object of this program? For somebody to get a line, either straight over or straight down or diagonally over. Okay, so if you have a look at this, it's very important that you explain what your program is going to do. What is the objective? How many users are going to play it? Maybe just one, maybe two, maybe three, four, if it's Monopoly. What is the program going to do? So you need to yeah, explain what the program is about. It's like when you go and you buy a game out at the store and you look at the, at, at the back, it explains to you what is going on in the program. 150 words, basically, if you go over, that's fine. Just try and make it too, too vague. Okay. Your task must be clearly stated. So, I, I, a marker or a user must be able to read exactly and know what's going on in your program. If it doesn't, it's going to just leave it and it's going to tie up another program. So you need to know what's going to do. So you can start something completely new. You can use something like um, rock, paper, scissors and write that program. Uh, and maybe just uh, revamp it a bit, it's, it put something onto that. You can, if you really want to go out there and try to do something like chess or um, something like uh, uh, drafts or go out and go, just, just go find out what you want to write. Okay. What does the program, what does the task involve? So this is all part of the scenario. Okay, so please explain, and I, and I can't uh, say it enough, explain what your program is going to do. It doesn't have to show everything because that will come just now. Okay, so in broad, a summary of your program. Okay, so please, uh, I say again, and I put in bold, don't be vague. Okay, for your program, you need to think what is the user requirements. So if I say user requirements, what does it, what do I mean? Okay, so what is required of the user in your game? What must he or she do? Okay, will the user need to log in? So do you have to put in the username and password to get into the program? Will use the what type of user? Is it going to be a user that um, is just going to, if you have a card game, you might have a dealer and he is in control of the game and you have four other players or three other players or two other players playing the game with him. Something like blackjack maybe, something like um, Romy, uh, in any game that you can think of that, so, but who will play the game? How many users will you have? What do they need to do? So what 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 do you think of your what is the user going to do a bit? Is he going to basically um is is he going to throw a dust that you need to basically say so what is required? What data will the user read in? Sometimes you'll have to maybe it's a it's a strategy game where you ask the user to move from one place to another and ask him a question and has to enter or answer. Uh, it might be a game where you are helping a school for people uh, learning uh, geography or, or whatever. So a, a game doesn't really just need to be um, a game that's played uh, the standards that we're used to. It can be a school um, game where you have a, a quiz or something. Okay, how will you help the user in the program? If he gets to a point and doesn't know where to go further, how are you helping? What are you going to say there? Okay. So what is the requirements and the limitation of your program? So what can the user do? What can't he do? What can the program do? What can't he do? 
So it's very important that you look at this. It's very important that you document that. If you're writing a program to document the results of the program, you need to look at the following. Okay. So again, these are the objectives of the program. So what objects are in the program? Monopoly, you might have a shoe and a car and a person and a hat. Um, you might have your own objects. You either decide you have, uh, if you have a, a, a two-dimensional game, it might be a person running over the screen, but you need to dodge bullets. You need to basically get out of the way of things. You need to jump over things. So what objects are in your program? And what can the user and what can the objects do? So can he jump over things? Can he basically move three-dimensionally? What can happen? A monopoly, how is your movement? Is it going to be around the board? Um, how will it use? So you need to really think about this and take this document and restudy it and put down what your program is going to do. Okay, how do you move the objects in the game? Is it your mouse? Is it the keyboard? Is it um, something else? Maybe a controller. Maybe you can link a controller to your program and, and write um, Delphi statements for that. So how will your objects move in the game? Are there limits to them? As I said just now, can they only move in one line? Can we live up and down? Can they turn wherever they want to? What is um, what is the uh, limitations on them? Okay. Which objects can move? You might have something that's static. You might have a tree standing there. It would be very weird that this tree starts moving around on your screen. Um, so what objects can, can move? What, which can't move. Um, you need to stay in it. Okay. And where can these objects move? Do they go off the screen? Do they basically go onto another screen? Um, so really think well about that. Okay. Do you have a score? And how will you display the score? What scores are you going to take? Are you, do you have three players? So if you if you have a game like like blackjack, you might have um, your dealer and three other people. That three other people basically are going to play in the card game with you. They need to get as close as possible to a score of 21. So therefore, you need to see where they are the whole time in the game. Are they over 21 already? If they're over 21, they bust, they, they're out of that specific game, they can play the next one. So you need to think, how are you going to work with the score? How are you going to display that? Okay, do you have a time? What are you going to time? How are you going to time it? Okay. Okay, so what is your limitations? How long can the user play? How many times can he play? So it might be giving you three lives or five lives or 10 lives or infinite number of lives. You can just go on playing the whole time and just enjoy himself, which is not really too helpful for, for your program. But you need to decide how many times um, and how long. What does the user not have access to? So if you have a card game where you have a dealer he might not have access to the cards previously. Otherwise, he knows what the cards are going to be, and he can make a bet, and that bet can make can be a problem. Because just think about that, if you already know what a lot of numbers are going to be, not a lot, a lot of fun in that. Okay, it's going to be fun because you're going to win the lottery every weekend, and you're going to make bankrupt a lot of people. And yeah, but. Sometimes you don't want the user to have certain access to things because that's going to spoil your game. If you're going, if you're playing Counter Strike or whatever, and you know exactly where your bots are going to come out or the other users are going to come out every time, it's no fun because it's no there's no random act in the thing. So you need to decide: Do you have random things? So does a user have access to what can he see, what can't he see? What does he know? What doesn't he know? 
Okay. A very important thing, and people tend to really, um, they really don't pay a lot of attention to that. And that is acceptance tests. So acceptance test is how do I test the data that I'm entering? So if you have a username and a password, what is going to happen? Okay. Firstly, the user must have a specific name that is entering that is correct. Otherwise, he can't use the program. So is he going to register somewhere, which we can't really do now because we're not really storing data. But we still need to have a look. Is there a value in it? So if, they, if you want to use a name, you need to, the user needs to enter something. So if it does enter it, it's a problem. So you need to be able to test for that. Okay. So you need to know is your program working. So you need to be able to test. You need to be able to make sure. You need to be able to make sure that the value that is um, that is being entered is correct. Okay. So make sure that that is is there so here's an example of tests that you can do okay so you can enter your username and password if it's correct it goes to the correct screen or the correct form if it's not it's going to give him an error message okay you can enter amount a bit if you enter too much you need to tell the guys and uh, you, you can't enter into so much, you don't have so much money left. So if you enter too little, the guy can't play. If he enters too much, you need to give him an error message. Okay. You need to know when the game stops. So if the game goes on and on and really has zero, there's a problem with your program. So you need to basically be able to look at that. Okay. So test for all the pro requirements of your program. Make sure that everything that you are going to do is tested and it's tested well. Now, a very important thing for you to do, this is phase one, as I said. You would see that I've done no programming. I really haven't looked at my screens yet. I haven't had a look at anything. But what I do know is, there are other programs similar to my program that are available in, um, in the real world out there. My program might be played by other people because it's similar to that program and it's a sort of skill acquired to that program. But there's no programming so far. There's no screens. There's nothing. The next part of the program, and what we'll have a look and a session about later, is how to design your program. So this is phase one, phase two is designing. So I would like you to do this, finish it as much as you can, okay? So you need really to look at what is is going on out there okay so do me a favor and if you have any questions on this and even if you're busy programming send a question to info and impact and we'll come back to you and we'll help you where we can okay i'm just going to have all the questions here just give me one second Okay, my question bar seems to be, okay, let's see how the questions that people have posted so far. Okay. I seem not to have access to the questions at this stage. I have access. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so let's see. Let's start at the beginning. 
okay, those connection problem, we are not going to have a look at that, just going to look at the priest. Okay, the code must of course be in Delphi. So, but as I say, you're not writing code in, in, at this stage, so there's no real problem. What I would suggest is that you start with phase two already. And what is phase two? Phase two has to do with designing your screens. So I would say maybe a good thing for you to um, go and look and make sure of your screens. Make sure that you really are starting to design them because then you can see where you are looking, working towards in phase in phase two. Okay, so start start with that. Um, Though you aren't handing any, any any screens in for phase one, I would really suggest that you start thinking your program, say putting something down in Delphi. Um, and, and, and maybe a good thing for you just just kind of look on YouTube, what other programs, what other games there are, and what other Delphi games there are, and how did they do that? What did they do? Okay. Okay, guys, let's just uh, finish the next. I don't, I'll, I'll come back to you on the questions later. Okay, so what is the possible solution for your, for the program that you are going to write? Okay, so you need to list all the functions of the program. So what's the function? The function would be how, what the user will do, what, what you want, how, you're not going to program it yet, but what functions does the user need to do? So the user needs to move. Um, okay, let's look at the need. The user needs to throw it us. So the new the user needs to um, have and decide what's going to happen when he gets to a to a street, for instance, and what's happening at that at that street. Okay, so your 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 program functions are: what does the user need to do? What does the program need to do? The program needs to have different streets. It needs to be something needs to happen when the user lands on that street. Um, it's going to have certain cards. What? Uh, how do you show the cards? What's what are you going to show? Um, so you need to list everything that's going to happen in the program every function of the program okay and then sorry so what about back one year i'm sorry okay so what major pro uh, problems do you think is going to what's going to be difficult for you to program what are you going to um what have you going to go to your program problems with so you need to have a look at that you need to really go and think about what are what is going to happen um that might be a problem for you okay so just any questions Somebody asked if this uh, is this a first attempt test or just a regular test? No, no, it's not a test at all. It's basically two documents. Phase one is a word document that you have to hand in. Phase two is a word document that you have to hand in. Phase three is your program. So phase three is a program that you developed and that you are going to send through to us. We'll get to phase three later and I'll explain exactly to you what is very important because we tend to receive not the whole program. Um, we seem to uh, get stuff on CDs that are not basically um, that is, is, is a half a program or no program whatsoever. So you need to check that. So no, it's not a test. This is definitely um, two Word documents 
and a program that you are going to give to us. Okay, somebody says he only has Scratch. We're not working in Scratch anymore. We've definitely moved away from Scratch now, and we're only working in Delphi. So you need to get Delphi. Um, Impact did send out um, a written notice previously stating where you can get Delphi and how you can get it. Okay, the question is how do I include a database into a very simple flappy bird game? I, you can go and have a look at how to work with databases, but databases are really just covered at the end of grade 11 and only starts really in grade 12. So you don't really have to use a database. What you can use is text files and it's a lot easier to use. Um, if you send me uh, if, if you send me a, a, a email, I can have a look for you and I can basically give, give you um, places where you can have a look for text files on, um, on, on, on uh, how to work with text files. The best way is to Google how to do text files in, 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 um, in Delphi. Uh, there's a really a lot of things on YouTube that you can have a look at. So do yourself a favor and have a look at that um, on YouTube. The question is, do you, we are sending everything to you in handouts. There is a handout at the bottom of the screen and we will definitely, um, you can download it. On the right hand side of your screen, there is uh, the handouts that you can, that you can basically click on and use um, and download it for yourself. Yeah, it is there for you. If uh, you were late for this session, you can go to um, to YouTube. The video will be on YouTube that you can follow there, uh, and then you can get all the all the things that I did in this session. You will be able to get there. Again, another question, how do you get Delphi? As I say, Impact did send out, just have a look at the notes that Impact sent to you. Um, the question is, can you get my email? Yes, you can, you can email uh, info at impact and I'll give you the email address again just now. It's in the slideshow. It will, be a, as, it will also be as part of your handout. You can have a look at that and you can, you can mail us. Okay, when the question and what program do we make the game in Delphi? That's, as I say, the program language you're using. Um, if you have a look at the Delphi textbook that is prescribed, a lot of the information is in that, and you can have a look at that information. Okay, so I think the best way is I'm going to answer the questions to you by via um, email and that's going to be the easiest way to work um, so that everybody and all those questions also will be posted posted um, 
let's just go to the next part. As I say, if you want to contact us, info at impact.co.za will give you, you can all post all your questions there. And as I say, we will definitely get back to you with answers on all these questions. Be sure, please, to download the handouts on the right-hand side of your, of your screen. Um, in, on the dashboard, you can then go and find everything that you need there. Uh, if there's anything that you're unsure about, as I say, again, please do yourself a, a favor and email info at impact. And as I said previously, I will come back to you. And that's basically that. Um, we will we will come back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for um, partaking in this lesson. Thanks for uh, your time. I hope it helped. I hope it gives you a bit of clarity in what you need to do. And yeah, as I say, keep in contact with us and we'll try to help where we can. Thank you very much. Bye.